Welcome back to Beyond Ideas. Today we'll do something a bit different than our regular episodes. We have four physics puzzles to exercise your thoughts. Nothing fancy like quantum mechanics or Einstein's relativity. Just some everyday thought exercise. So please get around with friends and families, take a piece of paper and a pen, and without further ado, let's get into the first puzzle. Suppose we have a fast-moving train, like Shinkansen in Japan. This train moves at a constant velocity of 300 km per hour. But if you're bothered by the metrics, let's say 300 units per hour. And now let's assume there's a falcon, one of the fastest birds in the world. The falcon is flying nearby the train at its maximum velocity of 300 units per hour. Now let's say that the falcon tries to fly very close to the train. In an attempt to do so, it sees a window open and next thing you know, the Falcon finds itself inside the cabin, flying fast of what it thinks its maximum velocity could ever achieve. Then picture yourself as a little kid, one of the passengers in the train. Assuming that the Falcon is still flying at its maximum, at that exact moment, what would you observe? A. The Falcon is floating stationary in the air. B. The Falcon is flying forward. Or C. The Falcon is flying backward. You can go back and rewind this part of the video, or take the time and pause if you need to. Have you written your answer yet? Go on, we're gonna reveal at the end. Well, maybe this one is a bit easy for some of you. Let's jump to our second puzzle then. You are still that little kid inside the train, and the train is still moving at the same constant velocity just like before. For our case, let's say that you and the falcon are somewhere close to the back of the train. Suppose that now you throw a slice of meat on the train floor, directly below the falcon. At this exact moment, the falcon gets that instinct to aim for the meat, changing its direction to downwards, and instantly forcing itself to a velocity of zero relative to the ground. Its intention is to land directly on the meat and eat it. So the question is, as a little kid sitting on the train, what would you observe afterwards? A. The falcon couldn't reach the floor at first attempt. B. The falcon will hit the back of the train. Or C. The falcon will fall directly on top of the meat. You can go back and rewind this video again up to this point. We see the movement of the falcon behaving in certain ways. Either this, this, or this. Now. Let's shift our perspective to us, the little kid inside the train. As a kid, we want to imitate things around us, and in this case, we want to fly just like the falcon we see. But because we can't fly, we jump as high as we can instead. You then get up from your seat and immediately start to jump high, multiple times. And now here's the puzzle. From another passenger's perspective, what would he observe when you land after the jump? And what is the reason of that phenomenon? A. You would land exactly where you jumped off, because the train's velocity and your velocity cancels out. B. You would land exactly where you jumped off, you and the train are one reference frame. Or C. You would have a slight deviation from where you jump, due to the super fast movement of the train. Please take the time and pause this video if you need to. Okay, before we go through all the answers, let's have an easy one. Instead of jumping inside the train, let's say you're jumping on a flat ground. Because in one way, our planet also rotates every second on its axis at a very fast velocity. With that out of the way, now let's jump into our final puzzle. After jumping vertically on a flat ground on Earth, what would you observe? A. You would land exactly where you jumped off. B. You'd have a slight deviation from where you jumped. Or C. You'd have some deviation depending on how high you jump. Alright, you've now completed all four puzzles, and I will explain the answer right after this. I'm gonna make a bold prediction. The majority of people will pick either one of the following options. In case you're not aware, here's what I mean by those pictures. Got it? And the right answers for the puzzle 1 until 4 are A, B, B, A, or ABBA. 
Congratulations if you have ABBA on your answer sheet. You are a master in physics riddles. But in case you get some of the answers wrong, let's get to the explanation. The first case, about the falcon who goes inside a moving train. Initially, it was flying from the outside and got inside the train. Now, both the train and the falcon are moving at the exact same velocity of 300 units per hour, relative to the ground. Because of this, the falcon would appear to be floating in the air, according to you. So to go back to our options, the right answer is A. Easy peasy, right? Here's where it gets more interesting in the second puzzle. Now, the falcon decides to morph its movement, aiming directly towards the meat beneath it. So it will stop all of its muscle, drops the horizontal velocity to zero, and no more aerodynamic lift or forward thrust whatsoever. The thing is, it just stops. In this case, the falcon will eventually fall downwards. But here's a tricky one. The floor is inside the train that is moving at a velocity of 300 units per hour. Because you and the falcon are somewhere at the back of the train, this is what's going to happen. Yes, the falcon will hit the wall. But why is that? Well, this is because the falcon will have zero velocity relative to the ground. But according to the moving train, the falcon will form a parabolic movement as it goes downward. This is due to the different relative velocity now with the train. The delta V is 300 units per hour. And the vertical movement is affected by half of gravity times squared. This is a different case if the falcon decides to quote unquote stop flying outside the train. In that case, it will just stop and drops to the ground, exactly at the same spot it was before. So coming back inside the train. No, the falcon won't fall exactly on the meat. Even worse, if the train door is opened, it will land on the ground, back where it belongs. Now interestingly, there is actually a way for the falcon to fall directly on the meat. I'll give you 5 seconds to think about it first. Well, the falcon must simply give the same constant velocity throughout the landing process. So it would have to still move at the same velocity as the train relative to the ground. If we were to isolate this particular event, this is almost like a falcon at rest needs to give an impulse of delta V during the transition process. This is to fight against a moving reference like this. In space travel, this phenomenon is all over the place. Rockets have a specific impulse, also known as ISB, to accelerate or decelerate themselves in an attempt to enter a planet's orbit. But I guess that's a bit too much for now. Let's move on to the next one, Puzzle 3. This time, you jump inside the train. Because the train is moving very fast, will you have a slight deviation when you land? Following the logic in Puzzle 2, you have no forms of action to compensate the train moving fast at 300 units per hour. So you would be overpowered by the train movement, right? Well, not exactly. Keep in mind that you've been inside the cabin ever since the train moves from the previous station at rest. So, you've been brought up slowly from the velocity of zero to a steady state velocity of 300. In this case, you and the train are one frame of reference. So when you jump vertically, you get the additional velocity from the train relative to the ground. So you would exactly land on the train where you initially jumped off. And this is the same with Puzzle 4. No matter where you are, inside a moving train, standing on a rotated planet, the answer is the same. When you are in one frame of reference, no matter how fast your frame is moving relative to another frame, inside, you'd feel as if nothing moves. Fun facts, our solar system is moving at 230 kilometers per second, rotating the galactic center. Our planet Earth rotates the sun at 300 kilometers per second. And despite all that, we are here laying on the bed watching YouTube videos, feeling as if we haven't moved a single muscle since morning. Which brings us back to the story of the poor falcon. The little falcon just wanted to fall on the floor and grab the meat. But why on earth did it get slammed to the wall? Why is life so unfair to the falcon, according to the outside observer, like it? This is one of the fascinating things about our laws of physics. Let me explain why. One moment ago, the falcon was basically an external observer, carefully watching the movement of this train. Not long after, it decides to go inside the train and be part of this new reference frame, or something like entering a new ecosystem. But as we explained in our isolated case, a falcon at rest would need a huge velocity impulse in order to land on the meat. The falcon will then be a part of the train. 
these insights actually give us profound meanings in many different fields. For example, if you were born in a not-so-wealthy family, life might be so difficult that you would compare your life to others that are more fortunate. But in the end, would you admit that being financially unstable is your fate? Or would you do whatever it takes to break that poverty chain? In that case, you would have to give an extra impulse. Live outside your comfort zone. Just like living on planet Earth might be a little too comfortable, space agencies and other organizations are trying their best to conquer other planets and solar systems. Mars is the new destination. In order to get there, we launch rockets and fight off Earth's gravity. And once we're about to orbit the planet, we give it another push. I mean, literally, there's an extra push of Delta V to reach the planet's gravitational field and land safely. From these analogies, we all learn that a little extra push in our life is always a great idea. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. Did you get all the answers correct? Regardless, I hope that you learned something new today. Also, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again in the next Beyond Ideas video.